out that if I go into this account, the clearing account, what it actually did was go in and out of this clearing account. So within this clearing account, you've got these transactions. It created a sales receipt and expense and then a deposit and it basically increases and decreased the clearing account as part of the transaction but ultimately did put it into the checking account which does remove one added step on our end if the deposit you know comes in perfectly to the to the exact dollar amount because now it should be in our in our checking account over here so if i go on to my my checking account if i go into my bank feeds and go into my banking checking if the if the deposit that hits my checking account matches exactly what that journal entry did then notice it'll just match up here and, and it'll record a match so when i record the deposit on the bank feed side of things no new transaction will happen it's just basically helping with with the bank reconciliation we're just saying okay we found that it matches out to to the deposit that was put in there by the journal entry process that was done through the bank feed shopify app connection all right so let's take a look at the income statement if i go to the income statement and i'm running it for 2023 because that's when we put the information in and now we've got the shopify sales so if i go into the shopify sales we've got our detail here i'm going to hit the drop down on the shopify sales and it created in essence a, a sales receipt but it's a group sales receipt so the sales receipt is the form typically used for a cash based type of sale that you would use in a cash register but note the customer is not each customer it's just one lump sum customer that was used to create that sales receipt so if i go back on over and exit then the we've got that we've got the the shopify shipping income so it broke out the uh shipping income that we charged for us and once again uh it did that here with the sales receipt form going back on over and exit so instead of just having a journal entry it did kind of a similar thing we did with a journal entry with the sales receipt it's got the shopify selling fees which it did put under the categorization of uh, cost of goods sold so if i go into the selling fees and hit the drop down here now we've got the selling fees that it broke out individually per that data that we saw that's pulling in for all the, the different sales transactions that happen let's x out of that and then we've got the the shipping selling fees here and then that is it now if i go back on over to the first tab and we go to our app transactions notice we were in the for review then we added it so now it's in the reviewed section and you can see kind of the detail which will link to what it did here as well so i can go into this one this is the the sales receipt that it generated you can see what it built it built a sales receipt which is typically the form used for a cash based sales at like a cash register situation that we just uh, saw sales receipt and i'll close that back out here's the expense form that was generated so expense form like a check form decreasing the checking account but it's putting it into the uh the, the, the clearing account that it made up here specifically for this expense form so we have those items and then we've got the deposit form which is of course the form typically used to increase the checking account so we made the deposit here not with the bank feeds but with the integration of the of the app and then if i go back on over to the first tab then we went to the banking and we can connect this out which will just not record anything new because it's already in the checking account it'll just verify helping us with our, our our reconciliation process so it looks like you know they're doing a similar process that we did with the journal entry grouping everything together with this integration which is kind of what is recommended obviously it, it works quite well if you have a if you have a situation where your where your payment structure is tied directly to the to the uh to the shopify store in this case that the other payment processors just like we saw with the journal entry methods will add another wrinkle uh, you know into the system that we'll have to deal with you hope possibly you can kind of uh, work around with that system they recorded the transactions not with like a normal journal entry 
but rather they used the forms, like the deposit forms, expense forms, and sales receipt forms, but they made group deposit forms, sales forms, right, that are combining uh, sales together. So the general concept is much the same we saw with the journal entry method. So now the, the general idea then would be with, a, with the methods that you want to use would be, do you want to just do the simple method where you integrate the bank account? Do you want to then use a journal entry method, which has a lot of manual work to it, of course? Do you want to use an integration, possibly the QuickBooks integration here, which is still a new type of integration, but it does look like they're trying to do, in essence, what a lot of people recommend for the best practices of the third party app integrations or applications like an, like an A2X type of system. But even as you're doing these integrations, you've got to think about uh, what's actually happening, which is similar to what we did with the journal entry. It's pulling in the information in a summary kind of format. Uh, it's not pulling in all of the information in terms of every uh, sales type of transaction. And you would think that the QuickBooks system here looks to be set up the way the QuickBooks system is set up for the particular apps that Shopify, Amazon, and eBay. And it's trying to trying to make it as simple as possible, which means you might have less options than maybe you would have with a third party integration. So, so if you need to do more customization or do something different, maybe the third party integrations might give you more to do with that. But obviously you would think the QuickBooks having it in in house here would be is kind of nice because then you don't have a third party you don't have the payment for the third party and you don't have to deal with a third party application so uh we'll have to see what quickbooks does with it uh, uh going forward but the, there would be a similar process if you used a third party app usually most people recommend an app that does kind of a similar thing as we saw here pulling the information in in like a group format basically making a journal entry format and using a clearing account system as we saw with the manual method.